Hi, I'm Marie Hopkinson, and today on the Chinese Medicine Podcast, we're going to be talking about the vegan diet. Now, this is um, a bone of contention, I would say, without pardon the pun, um, for many practitioners of Chinese medicine and patients of Chinese medicine. And it's actually been a recent question that I got on one of my videos. So I'm going to attempt to answer this this question, and there might be a series of videos on this or something like that, but um, depends on how long we did this one get. So the question was, um, can you tell me about the vegan diet in Chinese medicine and what... Um, you know whether it's healthy or not was something like it was some the question was something like that um the vegan diet versus not the vegan diet that was the question what, what's the chinese medicine viewpoint so to answer the question in a very short way um chinese medicine doesn't really advocate the vegan diet we can't say that it says that the the pure vegan diet would be considered a healthy diet in chinese medicine however the opposite of the vegan diet is often a meat eater in terms of a huge amount of meat not a lot of vegetables and maybe not in a healthy way of meat so let's say i'm an australian the average australian diet and particularly the average american diet um so we're not saying meat's bad but the amount of meat consumed the quantity of meat and there, there are a lot of more issues with diet face that we face now than we that we didn't face um 50 100 years ago so those are all things to consider and those things impact meat production um, so I'm going to do my best to attempt to answer this question. So please don't switch off. If you are a vegan, um, watch this video. Um, I'm not trying to convince you not to be a vegan, but just I will actually talk about how to be a better vegan, I guess, in a Chinese medicine way. How to ensure that your diet, um, like there's there's ways of being vegan and vegetarian that are worse for in a Chinese medicine sense than, than other ways. Now, I used to be a vegetarian. I was a vegetarian for nine years. Um, this is really just my personal story, but so I can understand why people choose those diets and choose different things. Now I didn't know anything about Chinese medicine when I was a vegetarian, um, and it was more an ethical, personal choice than um, like a, for a health reason. It definitely wasn't for a healthy reason. Um, and I understand that people have a lot of reasons why they do certain things. But if you were coming to me as a patient. My job is to give you the best advice I can for your case, for your individual situation. Chinese medicine is incredibly individualized. Um, based on my best assessment of your, your situation, what can help you get better the quickest and the most effective that it can. And there are some cases where people get very, very, in Chinese medicine we'll call it blood deficient, um, or maybe even very yang deficient, and they really it's their diet that's prohibiting them from getting better and there's only a certain amount of especially if you're only doing acupuncture and you're not doing any herbs then your body only has the substance to work with what you're putting into it now acupuncture can't put any substance in you it can only facilitate the free flow of things and make your like basically facilitate the free flow of chi or blood get blood flow to an area but if it's if your body has what in Chinese medicine they call it deficient blood or your blood isn't able to heal that air like a person who has a better quality blood would have a better ability to heal themselves um, and the acupuncture would kind of um, pro pro propagate that effect so there are some cases where it, acupuncture kind of reaches its reaches its limits and there's things where well you need to put a substance in you you need sort of you need Chinese herbs or you need um you need to address diet and even some patients on herbs they also need to address diet and lifestyle as well and that's pretty much what this channel is about where i'm about diet and lifestyle on this channel mostly and explaining chinese medicine things to people so they can understand better now um you know when i was in china um and like so i went to china to study after i did my main study in, in australia and this is very common in in uh in australia when i was studying practitioner practitioners who were my teachers would sort of laugh at you because you were a vegetarian and say oh, oh you, you're not very healthy um, but they give you no explanation necessarily about what is healthy about being a, not being a vegetarian now I wasn't I basically didn't eat anything with a face so I wasn't a vegan um, and over the years of um, studying Chinese medicine I changed the way I ate foods being a vegetarian um, to fit a better healthy uh, way a bit a healthier model in Chinese medicine so I'm going to explain to you how you can go about kind of doing that um, and hopefully that will help you and it just came to a point one day where um, now if, if you put if you're put off if you are a vegan and you put off certain things I'll, I'll tell you the reason why I was a vegetarian but this this puts a lot of people off 
meat and stuff as well, I guess, but it's the truth. Um, so when I, when I was five years old, I actually went fishing with some friends, um, friends of the family. And I, like, I didn't, as a five-year-old kid, I guess you don't really know where food comes from. And so we'd gone fishing and I just remember seeing the little fish in the bucket swimming around and then they were killed and it was like very scary for me and very, I don't know, I just remember that. I remember that thinking I'll never eat fish again. And from that moment, I pretty much tried never to eat fish again. Like I really, my mum used to make this dish called tuna mornay and I would really hate eat, having to eat that. And eventually I just never really ate fish and I just went, you know, at least my mum and dad were, um, you know, okay with us changing our minds and having our own viewpoints on things. But I, I really, I just didn't eat fish and my dad didn't eat fish either. So that made kind of things easier. Um, he didn't, he's never liked fish. My dad doesn't eat fish or chicken for some reason. I don't, I don't know, <laughs> I don't know the reason, but my, but my dad's a very fussy eater and my mum, um, is, um, like my dad just likes plain and simple foods and my mum sort of wasn't a very, um, advantageous cook, I guess. So she made the same things often over and over and, um, very nutritious, um, very conscious of nutrition and giving us lots of vegetables and not, su not sugar and things like that. And, you know, when I grew up in the, in the early 80s as a young kid, um, it was very common for kids to be given a lot of coital and things like that. Um, and so it wasn't, it wasn't um, you know, the health conscious ideas weren't really, um, I guess, I mean, every, every generation has its own diet fads and things like that. But what I'm getting at is um, the moral of the story is there was an experience. It was experiential for me that I was like, oh, I'm never going to eat fish again. And I never really felt eat comfortable eating, especially because fish, you could see what it was. And that was the thing for me. You could see the actual fish on the plate. And um, yeah, so I still don't eat fish. I just, I don't eat fish. I, cannot, I can't bring myself to eat fish because um, you can see the animal on the plate and it's really confronting and I just didn't, I've never liked that. Um, even tuna or nothing, I don't eat any fish. And um, yeah, so that's just, that's just my personal view. It's not necessarily healthy because fish is actually very healthy for you as a food. Um, can be incredibly nourishing and healthy. Yeah, so in, uh, what I'm saying is the reason why I'm making this video, why I'm telling you this personal story is I don't tell my patients this, this personal story. It's nothing, it's it's, it's really, um, it, like as a practitioner, your viewpoints have to be um, objective and this is a very subjective situation. But I guess why I'm saying this is because I understand why people make, that people make their own personal decisions for reasons, right? I understand that because I have my own reasons. And sometimes your reasons can be like founded in, like for me, the reason why I don't eat fish is not founded in any, um, it's not really a reasonable thing. It's experiential and it's like, you know, sometimes you're just not gonna change. Um, so, and, or maybe something would have to, you know, phys physically, something would have to go seriously wrong for people to actually change their viewpoints because based on, you know, another new experience. Um, you know, so if someone said like, oh, the elixir to life is in fish and if you don't, if you eat fish, you'll live a hundred more years. Well, I'd probably change my mind and eat fish, but, um, that's not true. <laughs> um, but it, you know, that, what I'm saying is if people really, they can change their minds. So that went on for a while. And then when I was 16, um, I had a Pomeranian dog and, um, my dog got run over and these kind of dogs just run out into the road a lot and you know they run they run out they run out easily like they get really excited and run out and anyway he'd run away just as his normal running away thing and that's just what he used to do and um I used to love this little dog and he he basically come home um and he was he'd been run over and his eye was hanging out of its socket like his eye his like one side of his face had been smashed and he'd he'd hobbled himself home I don't know how he'd done that. And he was an older dog, but he wasn't that old. He was probably about 10 years old, maybe. Um, Pomeranians can live like 16 years, some of them, like if they really, you know, if they're really looked after. Anyway, so his eye was hanging out of his socket and my sister had to hold his eye up in the car. Like we put him in the car to, to take him to the vet and like his eye was kind of poking out of its socket. That's why I, if I probably, you should probably just squitch over this this um, section of the video if um if, if this turns you off um and because i'm quite a graphic storyteller as well um anyway so his little eyes hanging out of his had hanging out of the socket and you know um and we took him to the vet and he had to be put down he just he, the vet was like oh he's gonna have one eye and he's gonna have like no legs and be on one of those little wheel things <laughs> you know it wasn't it wasn't funny at all 
Um, it was really, it was really sad. And I mean, I guess as a 16 year old, it's good to have that experience of having to make a decision like that because it made me, it makes you a better person. I think having to go through a real heartbreak at, at, at a young age and make a decision and your parents are like, well, you decide if you want the dog to be put down or do you want it to live? I mean, and the money is a big thing as well. The, 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 there was no pet insurance back then and the money was massively expensive. Like it would have been thousands of dollars that my parents didn't have any money to pay for dog bills and to have this then this, this day, disabled dog. Um, it's also like anyway it was just traumatic and it was horrible and so we ended up having to put the dog down Artie we had to put him down and um that night my mum was cooking up a p&m soup and the soup smelled exactly like the, the dead dog to me and I was just like it was I mean I was crying for months and months over that dog like I, I remember just crying and being like heartbroken and I even to the point where my parents wanted to sell the house and like maybe I wasn't 16 I might have been a bit younger than that actually I think but I think I was 16 because I would, that's that was basically that was the moment I became vegetarian I became vegetarian when I was 16 but um you know my parents wanted to sell the house at one point and I said if we sell the house you have to dig up the dog's body and bring it with us because I was like I just love that dog so much um anyway and so that's what happened and that's what made me become vegetarian because I just couldn't stomach the taste the smell particularly the smell and the taste of meat from that moment onwards and so it was just a decision like that now it's that I wasn't un- I wasn't unhealthy as a person as you know I had no problems no health problems or anything like that so I never and I never noticed anything change in my body really being a vegetarian um, but then what what my experience is being vegetarian basically being vegetarian was being okay I'm not gonna eat meat and uh, my mum probably thought it was just gonna be a fad and a phase and she let me go through it and then I just became who I was, but I couldn't handle meat. I even went out and bought my own fridge and put it in my bedroom because um, I couldn't handle meat being near my food um, <laughs> because the raw meat juice might drip down onto the vegetables, which is sometimes what happened in, in the fridge, you know, like just just that thought that, you know, you might have a packet of mints there and then the, the meaty juice might drip down onto the vegetables. It's like, no, there's no way that's going to happen. So I just went and bought my own fridge to put my vegetables in. Um, and what be, being a vegetarian, I think, as a young person, made me become a better cook because I was really got really into making foods because I had to make my own foods. Mum wasn't going to cook up vegetarian food, especially for me. Like, you know, she'd pick the meat out or something like that, but it wasn't going to be special vegetarian food. Um, and so, like, I had to cook up my own meals and learn how to cook. And I've learned how to cook a lot of different things, and it was a very good experience like that. Now, um, yeah, this is a <laughs> probably too long or long winded of a. A video um, it's just this is my personal experience um, and what I know from my own personal experience is you can be a bad, bad vegan or vegetarian as well because you can just um, maybe it's harder to be a bad vegan because there's a lot there's a lot more limited foods but like it wouldn't be uncommon for me to eat chips as a meal like um, that would just be what I had now I was a lot thinner than what I am now and I could eat a block of chocolate a day no worries and I was like size 8 skinny like no there was no weight problem it was just I just used to eat whatever I wanted in terms of just as long as it didn't have meat in it so there are people who go who want to go vegan or vegetarian as a health choice but they might not necessarily be it might not be as healthy as they as I think it is um so yeah just because someone says they're a vegetarian doesn't mean they're a healthier vegetarian I mean I know people who are vegetarians and they live on fillets of fish like from McDonald's so um fillet of fish burgers that doesn't mean you're a healthy you're a really a healthy vegetarian. So what we're talking about today is if you are a vegan or a vegetarian, what's the what does that do to your body in a Chinese medicine sense? And how can we um, make the best of, a situ- of that situation if you're not going to change things or, you're, or you are going to change a slight bit? What would you do? What would be the best way to do, go about things? So essentially the, the, the main thing that a vegan vet diet does, and vegetarian diet does this to some extent but not as much, is it tends to be... The foods you eat tend to be a lot colder in nature than um, your typical diet foods, like your your than meat foods. Now, meat contains more yang, and it's much warmer just in its substance before you've even cooked it, because it's come from an animal substance. Now, I'm talking about all kinds of meat here, um, like um, any kind of living creature that was living. Um, and especially things like eggs so this is where I think vegetarian you can get away with being vegetarian for quite some time and not have too much health problems um, 
whereas vegan because you're not having any even having any eggs um, or uh, dairy products then um, you know and there, there could be ways if people are vegan for ethical reasons there may be ways of being able to get those products in a more ethical way like if you had five friends and you all bought some chickens and um, had got your own eggs you know how those eggs are farmed you like the chick chickens are gonna lay eggs no matter whether like you know they are they if the vegans if people don't eat them do the eggs just go to waste like chickens are chickens are going to lay eggs that's just what they do so i don't fully understand personally how eating eggs is such a robbing the animal of its i mean like, like forcing production of farming giving animals hormones so that they produce more eggs or pushing putting them you know and these are issues that i totally you know agree that the, the like we've gone wrong as a society making you know the far, the way our farming is now it's not right um, and that doesn't necessarily produce a good good quality animals for us to consume because those animals aren't living in good conditions so in an ideal world if your animals are just farmed naturally or you're hunting them wild or something like that then then those then that would be the best way so as as if people can get towards go towards that kind of environment sharing meat with a community um, and cooking it like keeping it fresh storing it something like that hunting your own meat you know in some sort of community way that might be one way to go about things now um, so yeah it's not a perfect situation like me what I'm saying is eat, eat, in Chinese medicine I say eat meat but it's not um, it's not really that healthy to eat just the amount of meat that we eat as a in our society as a as a general rule and the way we eat that meat and the way things are farmed and all that kind of stuff so um yeah the main problem with a vegan diet is the general diet is pretty cold now cooling and cold things so your body if you if you haven't watched the video that i've done before called why eat mostly cooked foods that's a really important video to watch and that's going to explain the spleen and stomach as a cooking pot on the stove that example idea of like your body our body is mostly warm it likes warmness it needs warmness and the aging process is basically us losing our warmness it's us losing our yang so if you think of yin and yang the tai chi symbol um yin is the dark dense cooler parts of your body and yang is the functional activity so when you die you completely yin with no yang right your yang is your spirit your function your your ability the fact that i can move around and talk to you right now is a yang aspect and in general our bodies are two-thirds yang and one-third yin so we spend two-thirds of the time awake and, and doing things um you know we don't do things as vigorously the whole of those two-thirds of the time but and one-third completely sleeping and that's com that's a complete state or should be a complete state of yin right sleeping for those eight hours a day being inactive essentially so we need yang as a in our in our diet we need more yang foods in our diet and the problem with a vegan diet is a lot of those foods just naturally are yin foods they are cooler foods so cool foods fall on the yin side and then what can make the vegan diet worse which is the worst style of vegan diet would be the the raw food diet so if you're a vegan and you don't eat a lot of raw food then you then you're a little bit more healthier in terms of chinese medicine than someone who has a completely raw diet or a full a fully raw diet um so raw food is much harder to digest than cooked food so if you're a vegan watching this or you're considering veganism or you're not sure what what to do or you're, you're let's say your practitioners told you your chinese medicine practitioners told you you need to change your ways because you're a vegan then the the first suggestion i would make to you is to try to eat as much cooked warm cooked and moist we would say so cooked foods as much as possible and try to stay away from completely raw stuff um, now there are lots of different cooking methods it doesn't have to be stewed to oblivion and certainly the cooking methods you need in winter are a lot more stronger longer um, things like slow cooking is a really good idea but go out and buy a crock pot um, you can make a curry in your crock pot you can make um, you know like lots of sort of stews and soups and things like that in the crock pot um, so that would be my first thing is to say try to the best way to make a vegan diet more healthy in chinese medicine is to eat a predominantly cooked diet and to stay away from raw stuff stay away from really cold and raw so 
a, a smoothie, for instance, in the morning is very cold and raw. Now, why can some people digest these things and other people can't? One is their constitution. And this is where when you go to a Chinese medicine practitioner, they're going to be able to give you an individualized diagnosis. Um, and then sometimes things that happen to us. So illnesses that we've had or things that have happened, like if you become blood deficient in Chinese medicine, now women become more blood deficient than men because women have a menstrual cycle, men don't have a menstrual cycle. And also um, they, they have the opportunity to lose blood through that through the uterus aspect of your body much more than men do. So for instance, like if you have a child, you um, creating that child in the womb takes up a lot of energy and blood, mostly blood, right? If you have excessive uterine bleeding, like you have, um, you know, uh, like heavy periods or periods that last, you know, too long or um, that you have a lot of bleeding in between periods or, or just those kinds of things, lots of blood clots in the period, then that means that you're you're more likely to become blood deficient, like over time, okay? Um, and then also if you've had a surgery, so this is men and women, any, any people, um, if you've had a surgery, then you are, you've basically just physically lost blood. So let's say you're a vegan, you're very healthy, and you've, and you've, and you've been fine on that diet for a, for a while, and then um, you go and have surgery, and you find that, okay, after the surgery, suddenly I'm getting diarrhea, I'm getting loose stools. Why has that happened? Because cold food is harder to digest, and your body had enough resource before the surgery, and it was fine, and it just, it just managed things in that way, okay. But then after the surgery, you've lost blood, so you become blood deficient. Now, blood is has got yang in it because it's warm. So you've lost yang. When you lose blood, you've lost yang of, of your body. And so then that's left you deficient. And now you've got this diet, which is actually hard to digest. And you didn't realize that because all along you were okay up until this point. And your digestive system, like your bowels directly reflect your digestive system. So when you eat something, if you let's say your bowels are properly formed normal once a day, your poop it's it's pretty normal and then you eat like a bag of fruit you know like when you're a little kid and you go eat way too much fruit at one point then your your stools become suddenly very loose or they change color or something like that or become very stinky or um you know they just become unformed that kind of stuff um that's showing you that the, the foods you've eaten is too much for your body to cope with so you've eaten too much of i mean if you've ever eaten a bag of dried apricots you probably know that's that what ha what happens sometimes you can even get a gut ache like it'll actually affect your stomach and you'll be like having pain and things like that in your gut. So those things are things to watch out for. If you're generally pretty healthy and then you eat a, a something different and your bowels change or you get bloated or you get diarrhea or something like that, um, or sometimes even people do get constipated from certain foods, like more if your body's deficient, you're gonna get diarrhea, like chronic deficiency, um, where your earth element of your body, your spleen and stomach is gets cold, then you're going to have the inability to hold on to the yang of your body, and then it all just comes out kind of loose and, and maybe even watery, that kind of stuff. Um, so that is one aspect. Now, something that you can try in your diet, I've got a little, well, not a little, but a big piece of ginger here. Um, you can try in a vegan diet adding more pungent warm foods into the diet. Now, you don't want to have, especially if you're blood deficient, you don't want to have too much pungent um, in, that makes you sweat, okay? So like cinnamon is a good one to have, but you don't want to have like a ton of chili and so much ginger and things like that that you actually become sweating and 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 um, like, yeah, sweat, like sweating too much. So some pungent foods can be useful. And if you are, let's say, you're never going to give up the smoothies, even though I'd say it's probably not a good idea to have too many smoothies and we'll go through some people that can have those smoothies but um so you can add some pungent foods into your diet now let's say you are going to have some smoothies now the best time of the year to have smoothies would be summer in winter time i would not recommend anyone a vegan vegetarian meat eater or otherwise to have smoothies in their diet in summer it's too cold like it's all raw so like raw food smoothies you put a lot of and those bullet nutrient sort of um, extractor machiney things um, have made that stuff go get, get really, really popular. Um, the, the thing with the smoothies is sometimes you're just having too much nutrition, too much concentrated nutrition and it overpowers your body and it makes it really hard to digest. If you eat those smoothies and then you've got cramps in your, in your abdomen, you've got, you get diarrhea, then you're putting too much stuff in there. It's too hard to digest. It's way too cold. One thing you could try is putting a little thumb 
of ginger into the smoothie. Um, you can add cinnamon. Um, it's harder to blend the cinnamon up. Like you can have just, you know, you can sprinkle cinnamon in there, um, teaspoon of cinnamon, something like that. Um, you can try adding pepper into those foods. So pepper, ginger, cinnamon, um, basil, garlic, and coriander, and those kinds of, they're pungent foods and they will increase the yang properties of whatever they're mixed with. So they, they can be good in your foods. Now some things can go in smoothies nicely, other things maybe not, maybe coriander isn't gonna be great to put into a smoothie, I don't know, um, probably not. Um, and baby pepper, not either, but those things are warming. You just don't wanna have chili where it's burning you hot so that you sweat, because if you sweat, then that's gonna make you more deficient. So for vegans to make it, try to be a help, try to make the vegan diet a little more healthier, try to include as much warming foods as you can and avoid too much cold and certainly avoiding the raw foods. Now in summertime, that's the peak of yang, you're, you can tolerate a little more cooler foods. And certainly if you're younger, the young, younger people have more yang and so they can tolerate these kinds of diets more easily without too much showing too much detriment in their body. But Chinese medicine would always say, it's still not good for you. So if you wanna live 100 healthy years, that kind of diet still, it's not really promoting that because it's not promoting the warmness. Go back and watch that video if you haven't already, the, the, the way it mostly cooked foods. And that will kind of explain to you that warm, that spleen and stomach, needing that warmth. So um, that's one aspect of it. Now, the other aspect is um, if you are vegan and you're very blood deficient, your practitioner's told you, it's not this isn't the greatest diet for you but you've, you've you've made that decision for ethical reasons and you're sort of wondering what to do or how to change from there um one thing you could try is maybe it be having eggs occasionally or having eggs i mean i'd say regularly would be good eggs would be a good thing to to, to have um dairy products aren't like that uh I don't want to say necessary, but like they're, they're not like if you were going to only have a certain amount of products in your diet, I would say go for something like bone broth. Um, so you're making that out of bones. Um, and you're making, you're, ma you're making that soup. There's heaps of recipes on the internet about how to make your own bone broth. Um, if you're really adverse to cooking meat, like I can understand when I, when I changed from being a vegetarian to a meat eater, I couldn't cook my own steak or anything for like maybe two years actually. It was very hard for me to cook meat. It was very hard for me to face. Like I just, I basically started by having, I was in China at the time when I stopped being vegetarian. It was like the second second time round in China, I think second or third time I'd been there. And um, I had some chicken and stuff there. And yeah, I'm pretty sure it was chicken. <laughs> um, it was from a restaurant that said it was chicken. And I just remember thinking, this is really delicious. And this is also like, I could feel it in my body. I could feel the difference in my body. Um, and so, yeah, that the, the, the amount of that stuff that you need isn't really a lot um, for to, to, to give you that nourishment. So chicken stock, the bones of the chicken and cooking chicken stock from scratch is one of the most nutritious foods for blood that you can have in Chinese medicine. Um, so that's, that's one aspect. Now, another thing you can try is actually using herbs in your cooking. So I'm gonna go through, oh, let's very carefully get this down. I'm gonna go through a couple of herbs that you can try adding into the cooking. Now we've talked already about ginger and that's the pungent foods, but there are some like blood tonic foods you can use in your cooking. Um, I think I had that herb out for, um, okay, dung wei. So I had this out because I was um, using this in my class yesterday. This is a, a plant-based herb. So, you know, if you're a vegan, you can, you can eat this. Um, and what you do with the dung is you just put a bit in your soup when you're cooking it, like when you're cooking the stock of your soup, probably about that much I'd put, a, put in. Um, it's like a handful. Um, you can put maybe twice as much of that if you want. Dung has its own, I mean, all herbs have their own taste, but it does have its own taste, its own flavor. It's not a horrible flavor. It's just a different flavor. And you just have to get used to that flavor. But this is a really good blood tonic herb that you can use and um, like in Chinese medicine there are some recipes like herbal recipes where they cook this with meat 
You can cook it with veggies as well. So what I would suggest you do is go down the supermarket or whatever, you, wherever you buy your fruit and veggies and get those little soup packs where you get like a turnip, parsnip, um, usually a carrot, celery, maybe half an onion, that kind of stuff. The little soup, soup pack things. And cook that up on the stove with the herbs. And then you can just pick these, because these herbs are usually bigger, these kind of bigger pieces. So you can cook them, cook the herbs with the, um, the stock and then you can either strain all that stuff out or take out the pieces of the herbs and then blend that up blend out the the stock and then put cook your other things into the stock so you might have like beans or lentils um in there you might have um pumpkin or carrot cabbage or whatever you have whatever you're making with as your soup i don't know if i can get this the lid off this because it's going to be really really stuck on no i can't get it off um, so this is called Shudi. Um, so this herb is um, also another blood tonic herb, and you can use this in um, in your cooking as well. And there's a formula you can buy um, from Chinese food shops called Su Wu Tang. Su Wu Tang. It's basically just got like these two herbs and a couple other things in there, and that is a blood tonic herb. Now why I'm mentioning that is because it's easy to get that. It's you can't go down the Chinese food shop and just buy. Shu Di or Dungwei by itself, but most Chinese food shops, like those Oriental supermarkets, will have those little soup packs, and sometimes they even have Iran, a little bit of barley or some other things in there. Um, so you, what you want to do is get the Su Wu Tang. I'll put the, I'll put it down as a thing right down there, and um, you, you can basically just boil that up with your soup and make a make a soup with that with your veggie soup. Um, if you do it as a meat thing, like if you're not a vegetarian or a vegan, you can you can do it as a do it in a, as a meat thing. So um, I think one of the questions on this um, thing was um, how often should I eat meat if from for like for medicinal reasons? And um, like this person said, it would be great if you did a video on vegan but diet versus not. I've been a vegan now, but I'm trying my best to eat eggs and even tried red meat the other day. Although it's gross for me, I did notice more energy and my bowels were great the next day instead of loose. So like that that's a really common thing what that means is if your bowels are better than loose then your body's like able to digest that more and it's um, giving it some more yang to help it kind of form the bowels so meat you can probably get away with eating meat like once a week depends on how deficient you are and what i would suggest you do is make a bone broth or make a soup or a stew kind of mixture and then like especially if you're making a chicken stock you can freeze that and then use that in your vegetarian kind of cooking, in which will add heaps of flavor if you have a chicken stock, not, not, a, not a bought one, one that you've made yourself. Um, and then that will add that will add more flavor, but it will also infuse that that the the yang tonification part of the meats into the to into your food. Um, you certainly people don't need to eat meat every day. That's like you know, not a healthy way to eat meat. Um, in a general sense now i'm not against any diets like there are the carnivorous diets and there's all kinds of different diets and i think one thing to think of which chinese medicine very much embraces is we are all human beings and we all technically have the same body but we don't we don't we don't all have the same constitution like chinese medicine sees people do have different constitutions and if you look into like a five element type of style of chinese medicine you're looking at like wood fire earth metal water there are different kind of body types and it, i think those body types are made by yeah your genetics how you're what you're what you're born with so that's like comes from your um your your background your ancestry and it's like that but it also comes back to how you were raised your and and in what conditions you were raised in those early years and how your constitution kind of developed like did you get a lot of illnesses when you were young um and ha have you recovered well from that or have you always been a sickly kind of person um in, in terms of your digestion there's some people that just they're very sensitive to things and they'll be like oh if i just even have a touch of this or a touch of that then i'm, I'm you know very super sensitive to stuff um so yeah look like and so hopefully this this video has been useful for people um the other downside of the vegan diet which i see in chinese medicine so there's two main things one is it can it has a big opportunity to be very cold and raw it's, it's all automatically very cold but then if it's raw it's even more detrimental to you so try to avoid the cold and raw aspects of foods try to have a lot more um, warmer foods 
So foods that are grown underground, root vegetables, um, are a lot more warming and tonification, ton, ton, and tonifying to your body than things that are grown above ground. So that's just one thing to think of. Try to, trying to avoid too many fruits in, in winter time and, and following the seasons of, of things. Um, so if you're having fruits in winter, they should be cooked fruits and you can use those things as like cooked fruit desserts or stuff like that. Um, then and the other aspect is some people follow a diet which a vegan diet can often have a lot of beans in it. And so beans are used as a substitute for protein or not a substitute, but a source of protein. Um, and it, so it's not so much about in Chinese medicine, it's not really just replacing the protein aspect, which, you know, you, you like people who are, uh, criticize the vegan diet often say, well, you can't get enough protein being a vegan. That's not the argument in Chinese medicine. It's more the yang aspects of the foods. Like there's a big chunk of, um, those, that aspect of your diet kind of missing. And so what beans do is they have a draining damp or, and a downward draining effect on your body. So if you've eaten something toxic, beans are a really good way to detoxify your body from the toxic toxins of foods or toxins of poisons and things like that. And they do that by purging your body. So if you've eaten something toxic, let's say you've eaten something poisonous and you want to get it out of your body as quickly as possible, then that's the method that you use, like a purging method, right? You either vomit it out or you, you purge it out. And especially in the days before they had stomach pumps and things like that. Then in Chinese medicine, like, you know, in those, those in, that med, in that medical sense, that's how they would purge something out of you, right? Now, I mean, these days we just pump people's stomachs if they've eaten something toxic and overdosed on a drugs or something like that so that your body doesn't have to metabolize it at all. Like it just whips it out of your body. Um, so if you consume a diet which is high in beans, you're constantly detoxing, purging your body. Is that a good thing? What that means is it's whipping things through your system so quickly that your body doesn't absorb the nutrient value of the food, other foods that you've eaten. Um, and that would be seen as a detrimental aspect of the vegan diet if you have a lot of beans in your diet. So the two main things that can make the vegan diet worse. So this is just in summary. Okay, in Chinese medicine, we don't really advocate a vegan diet. But if you do, if you are a vegan and you want to be a bit more healthier, try to avoid lots of raw stuff so have as much cooked as you can and try to avoid too much raw chinese medicine would never advocate a fully raw diet whether you're vegetarian or vegan or whatever like um or, or meat eating like just a, a raw diet the raw the predominant your diet should be pr predominantly cooked in all seasons and in winter it should be mostly cooked like almost all, all of your foods should be cooked in winter um so for instance like you'd have you might have something raw Right, and even raw juices and things like that. Um, try to avoid highly concentrated nu the nutri the highly concentrated nutrients that can come from having too much raw would be a detriment of the vegan diet as well. So what the 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 fix to that sometimes can be adding a little bit of pungent into the juices. Um, and even if you're a vegetarian or a meat eater and you love juices, then this is a good tip for you. You can try putting a bit of ginger or cinnamon into the juice, um, that mix that you make in the morning. And then the other aspect is the beans. So if you're if you if you're having a lot of beans and lentils, legumes, uh, then be careful that you're not having a diet that's too detoxifying, and that can have a purging, a, a purging effect. So you might your body might be quite thin, um, but this can also mean that sometimes people have trouble putting on weight, like keeping weight on their body. But also your if your bowels are very loose, if you're a vegan and your bowels are loose, like that's not a good thing. And certainly if, it is, if it's happening all the time, then that's, that, that's not a good thing. So your Chinese medicine practitioner will be able to give you an individualized plan, like an individualized assessment for your body. And some people can be quite healthy on a vegan diet. They can manage to stay quite healthy. But um, if you go t towards the end of the spectrum where you're having too much raw, it becomes even more cold. And that over time, that, that's even though your body might seem healthy in Chinese medicine, we would say that um it's not going it's going against what your body naturally wants to do and it's actually just wasting the yang of your body it's wasting the, the warmness of your body so i hope this has been helpful and useful to you um i've shared a little bit of my own personal story and um hope that, 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 that that's useful and helpful um please leave a comment and don't forget to subscribe to the channel um, you can share this video with your friends and family and um yeah if you've got a question about Chinese medicine, um, pop it in the comments below. I'm happy to answer people's questions. 
and uh, thanks very much for watching.